So it's lovely to see uh, a new day and to realize that change is not uh, something to be to fear, but something to welcome often. And uh, we're going to talk just briefly about Santosha. Uh, the uh, epigraph here is from Lao Tzu, uh, um, and it is seek contentment within yourself, treasure the way your life is. When you understand your wholeness and your completeness, the universe belongs to you. Um, so Santosha means completely, wholly, entirely. Uh, Sam or San and Tosha is acceptance, satisfaction, contentment, sated, full, and joy joyful. Um, it's a glass half full of inner contentment, according to uh, one of the one of the uh, yoga teachers. This is from Gabrielle Harris's inspired yoga teacher. She's actually quite a good uh, yoga teacher. Um, so uh, I think we'll just um, begin to um, uh, we'll begin by by uh, being on our rock. And if you if you wouldn't mind getting a strap, that would be helpful. Um, and you might have a little blanket nearby and a couple of blocks. Um, you don't need a blanket, but a strap is very helpful. Um, and I'm going to just uh, turn the lights on so we can see here. Um, I'm going to just stretch out on my back with my with my belt, and uh, we're going to we're going to really try and do some. Um, beginning postures that will help us open our body up uh, for the uh, standing postures that we're going to do later on. Um, so we're just going to lay on our back here. And um, we're just going to, put, because it's it's uh, the first posture that we do, we're just going to stretch our, our legs and arms out and give our full body stretch and see how that feels. Does it feel uh, achy? Are there aches and pains in your body? Do you want to stretch one arm a little bit more than the other? Or one leg more than the other? Do you want to stretch out through your heels um, with, your, with your feet in dorsiflexion and, uh, and then extend your toes and then your heels and then your toes? Um, do you want to stretch your right, uh, right arm up and your right leg down and then your left arm up and your left leg down and then uh, you can just bring your hands to the to the side and you can take your strap and you can uh, put your right foot in your strap and I put it uh, uh, and then you can stretch it up to wherever it's comfortable um, you want to feel you, you want to feel that you can um, imagine the hip actually going into the hip socket. So you want to um, feel you can kind of lift the foot up and then feel it, it draw it back down um, and lift it up and draw it back down. Lift it up, draw it back down. And um, you can just leave it here. If you if you feel like it and you're you're in the mood, you can draw it a little bit closer to you. Um, you want to feel or or you can just leave it uh, so that you're the sole of your foot is heading up towards the ceiling. You are curling your toes back uh, and you're pressing out with your heel. Um, you should feel, you can put your hand on the hip crease on the, of the right raised leg and you can roll your, um, your thigh uh, towards the outside uh, and stretching up, up, up and rolling it towards the outside. There we go. Um, now, we're just going to take this foot and we're going to uh, open it out uh, to the side here. Uh, and you can open it out to where it's comfortable. You could put bolsters underneath if it's too hard, if you're, if you're not able to, to do this. There's no right way to do these postures. It's just listen to your body. It's a bit, bit of a cliche, but it's true. <laughs> listen to your body. And you want to make sure you listen to your body because you, you want to... Uh, uh, become really familiar with its ebbs and flows and how it's feeling at every moment. And I'm pressing through my heel here and I'm just um, putting my hand, my left hand on my left hip just to keep it grounded. And both shoulders should be on the ground. You should be fairly relaxed in your upper body. And I'm extending through both heels 
and and the the object of this is really just to stay in the position for a little while uh, because you want to let your body open up and you and here gravity plays a, a, a role and we're just inhaling here and exhaling inhaling and exhaling. And now we're going to lift the foot up. We're still pressing out through the heels and we're going to cross it over the body. And you can uh, cross it over uh, and you'll feel the, uh, the right hip rise up. So in my case, the, the right hip is sort of almost over top of the, the left hip. And uh, I'm using my elbow here just to uh, stabilize my foot so it doesn't go any further than I want it to. Um, and once again, pressing up through the heel and inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. And I'm raising this right leg up again, I'm bending it, taking the uh, strap away and putting it around the other foot and then stretching out the right leg and, and uh, stretching out the raised left leg. And once again, I'm putting my finger in the hip crease and rolling my thigh out. However, my foot is, is uh, uh, straight but you, you want to feel the rotation of the upper, upper thigh a bit here. And if you put your, your thumb in the, in the hip crease, you can also feel, uh, you can also um, feel how the hip wants to rise up and how you need to keep the, uh, uh, the sacrum on the ground. Um, and the other thing is, it's, it's, sometimes it's really hard to feel how, how to straighten the leg. So um, you want to kind of push the, the thigh back and around and, and push out through the foot. And that will really help you um, straighten the leg. Now I studied, I studied yoga with this woman who studied quite a bit of biomechanics and that notion that somehow your, your knee is going to be, you know, hyperextended and go back. It, it, that, that really doesn't happen unless you have hyperextended knees. It's very difficult anatomically for the bones to go back. So you, you don't have to, I've always been very worried about overextending my knees and this and that, but apparently new research suggests you don't have to really worry too much about that unless you do hyperextend. Um, and that's something that you, uh, you have, you're a hyper flexible body. That's something you need to attend to uh, differently. Okay, I'm just pressing out through the heels again. And you can, um, you can hold on to the toe or the foot now this is my the, my left side of the, the my, my legs is this is the one that's quite stiff, so it's quite hard for me to hold onto my toes. But and we're just going to um, extend it out here and and once again we're trying to keep the right hip down. So you don't want to extend it out more than um, more than you're going to. Uh, more than you're able to keep that, that right hip down. I'm using my hand to provide a bit of weight. If you, if you have a sandbag, you could put a sandbag on your, your, um, your right hip and that would help with this posture. Now we're, we're keeping this, we're keeping our body in this, these poses for a fairly long time, just for a few minutes. If this were yin yoga, it would be four minutes and sometimes a bit longer, a bit shorter, but we won't be four minutes here, but keeping it, keeping the um, the muscles stretching is a very uh, really helps open them up. And you can sort of relax for a minute and then extend your leg again, and that allows the muscles uh, perhaps to move a little bit further. And now we're going to lift that leg up, extending, 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 and drawing it over the other side, and. I'm not monitoring our breath at every turn, but we really want to feel our breath moving in and out of our body. And it, 
it's related to our uh, muscles and our extension. So we're elongating here. We're elongating our, our, we, no, I'm right beside a wall. So this is one thing you can do if you're doing this on your own, you can put your foot on the wall and you can press into it. And that really helps you, um, helps you uh, get some um, torque in your, in your body here. And we're just, I'm looking over to the other side. So I'm giving myself a little twist. And now I'm raising up my leg and I'm taking the strap away. And I'm, I'm just going to um, windshield wipe my legs back and forth a little bit, just to give them a little bit of a relaxing stretch here. There we go. All right. Now I'm just going to raise my, my legs up again and I'm just going to open them out into a B. And I'm just going to leave them there. I'm pressing out through my heels. We'll do this on the mat later on probably, but uh, it's nice to do this posture laying down because you, you, once again, gravity helps a little bit with your, with your legs, extending, extending your legs. And now you can lift it up, lift your legs up. You can bend your knees. And while we're down here, I think we'll just do a little bridge pose because uh, we can. <laughs> and uh, I just have my arms by my, by my side and I'm pressing my feet into the floor and lifting my hips up and extending them. And then I'm going to just roll down slowly. We're just going to do some very easy bridge poses here. So once again, I'm lifting, I'm just curling my tail under and rolling vertebrae by vertebrae. I'm moving up and then I'm rolling back down. My, my arms are straight beside me and my palms are facing up. And we're just going to do this a few more times. And now we're going to roll back down. So we're doing similar spinal work that we do when we're doing cat and cow on our hands and knees, because we're just rolling our spine open and, and then we're rolling it down. So one of my teachers talked about this wave of the spine and, and uh, I love the notion that our chronological age is less significant than our spinal mobility, <laughs> because that means I'm, I'm fairly youthful. My spine is pretty limber and, um, and it does really help help with your everyday functional movement. And uh, it lifts your spirits to feel mobile. And... All right. Okay, so this time we're going to clasp either the side of the mat or we're going to clasp underneath our body, uh, our hands underneath our body. So we're going to rotate our tailbone up and we're pushing up and we are uh, clasping our hands or holding onto the mat and we're just going to really push our our pelvis up we're, we can, you can push you can extend your you can elongate your your thighs and knees towards the opposite wall you can press your thighs up your pelvis up your chest up and press into your feet and press into your shoulder your arms your forearms that are on the ground and your hands and now I'm going to roll down and I'm just going to lift my legs up, lift your legs up and you can roly poly around back and forth. All right. And now I'm going to move to a seated position and we're going to work a little bit on our arms. So I'm taking that strap. I'm just sitting in an easy posture or if you want to, you can sit in uh, whatever feels comfortable, a half lotus, or, or just uh, you can put, you extend your legs out if you like. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just taking the strap, holding it in my arms, and I'm going to just lift it up and inhale. 
And then I'm going to allow it to get quite long and move my hands around uh, and to the, bot to the bottom. And then once again, I'm lifting, keeping my arms straight, lifting them up and moving around to the front. Now you only need to do, you know, you can make the strap as, as wide as you want um, to open up our shoulders. Now, if you have an elbow injury, this might hurt. So you want to protect your, your, your injured body and, uh, and let time do some of the healing. There we go. All right. Good. And we can have it raise it up and we can just turn our, rotate our body to the right from the uh, bottom of the torso and then uh, to the front and then rotate it to the left and then to the front. And uh, once again, we'll go down and rotate it up, down, around, and rotate it up. Good. Okay, since we're on the floor, we might as well just keep, keep moving. Um, I think we'll just sit up and feel we can roll our shoulders around because we've given the, the shoulders some movement this morning and we can roll them the other way. And also I want us to do something with our neck because just uh, tilt your head back. Uh, if you have neck injuries, don't do this um, until your doctor tells you how to do them. And uh, so tilt your head back and then tilt it forward, tilt it back, tilt it forward, and then upright, and then turn towards the right, turn towards the left, turn towards the right, turn towards the left, uh, and then in the center. And you can take your, your right hand and put it on the side of your, your, on your ear, and you can gently apply a little bit of, of uh, weight or pressure here, just to extend your neck out. And you can slowly rotate your neck, but you don't want to do this with too much uh, strain or stress. Um, but this really will help you. I find I get a very stiff neck from, from I don't know what, from probably looking at too many screens or um, just being crotchety and old. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to take our, our hand and put it on the other ear and extend your neck out. Okay, and now once more to the front, to the back, to the front, to the back, to the right and left, right and left. Good. And we're going to take our hands and we're going to flick them. We're going to pretend we're flicking water from the palms of our hands and we're just flicking them and we can just raise our arms up overhead and flick our hands. We could shake them out. Flick them up, up, flick the water off of our hands and shake them out. We could shake them up all the way around our body. I think I remember dancing like this when I was young. <laughs> all right, good. Okay, now we're just going to extend our legs out in front of us. And you can sit on a, I'm sitting on a, on a, on a folded blanket, it's not too thick. Um, and all that does for you is uh, it lifts your hips up and up so that if you have tight hamstrings, this, this really gives you a little bit of a, of a, of a, um, of a head start. So you can sit on a blanket. I'm pushing up with my heels. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, extending my toe mounds out as well so that I'm feeling my, the arches of my feet. And uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of a forward bend here. You can put your strap around your feet if you like, and you can uh, hold on to it with bent elbows and just with a straight back, go forward, um, forward, forward, straight back. 
And I'm just, I, I, really, I'm not making much effort here. I'm just trying to keep my legs extended. And I'm using my elbows um, to help me, help me move down. So I'm going out with a straight back until I can do that no longer. And then I'm just going to fold over my feet and hold on to my hands. And I'm here, I am really feeling a, uh, a kind of a, a safe inward movement here where we're really well defended, <laughs> our belly is well defended here. And you can use your elbows once again. I'm not really straining too much with my feet, so you go down however much you can. And now we're ready to come up. And we will put uh, one foot, this is a kind of uh, seated tree pose, but, uh, and we're, so I brought my, uh, the, my right foot, sole of my right foot on my uh, inner left thigh. And I'm holding onto my, my thigh here and extending my leg down and holding onto my foot. Um, you could use a strap here and just um, keep your back straight and press into your foot, press into your heel and extend down however much you like. You may not be go any further than this, which is fine, um, whatever your body wants to do. And then at a certain point, you can um, just allow your body to relax over top. You could hold on to the out outside of your extended foot and that will help you with your little twist. And then you're just going to settle into this for a minute and breathe easily, as easily as you can. Inhaling, filling up the back body, because here we're, we're kind of crushed in the middle, but we can, uh, the back body is open and we can feel the air opening up the back body, our breath. We're just going to rest here for a few moments. If it feels uncomfortable, please do come up. And you can do you can just extend from the heels. Now we're going to rise up and extend our right leg out and bring our left leg into the inner thigh of the right foot. And we're going to um, turn our body slightly towards the uh, feet, which are extending straight up towards the ceiling. And once again, uh, we can extend forward with a straight back. And you can use your elbows to help you move forward. Uh, you can hold on to your toes, the top of your foot, or you, you can hold on with your left hand, you can hold on to your outer right foot, and that helps you with your twist and it helps you extend down. And the object of this really is to have your head moving towards your foot. So that when you're down here, you want your, you want to kind of feel that your chest is extending forward. Um, while your, your head is dropping down. You can use your breath, the inhalation and the exhalation of your breath, like a wave to help you settle into the pose. Your breath is a lovely enabler and opener. And now we're going to come up again. Good. Now we're going to just uh, do a twist here and we can um, bring our right leg uh, in uh, bent, uh, and uh, we can, let me see, okay, uh, yeah, we can bring our right leg over the, over the extended leg, um, bent, and then we can bend our left leg underneath us, um, and I'm going to just extend my right arm up, oh, sorry, my left arm up, I seem to be back, it's my backwards day, uh, my left arm up, 
And, and I'm going to just, first of all, I'm going to extend up and then I'm going to turn, but I'm turning with from the bottom of my torso and I'm extending up at the same time. And then I am releasing my arm out and using my arm to help me twist around further. Um, and my chest is opening out to the, to the back of the room. And there's a little bit of a back bend here. You want to feel your your um, extent your extension up is allowing you to really open your chest. If you prefer, you can hold on to your your knee, and that might give you a more opportunity to uh, really open up into this posture. And now we're going to open up to the other side uh, for a minute and just put our fingertips on the ground and feel the extension up and, and, a, and a, a more modest, but nonetheless useful twist to the other side as a counter pose. And now we're going to come back. We're going to extend our legs out again. And I'm going to wiggle my toes because my toes get crampy because I'm, my, I might have a mobile spine, but my toes are definitely old. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to lift our left leg up and put it over, am I doing this right? Yes, yes. Okay, my left leg up, put it over by our thigh and we're going to bend our right knee in or you can leave that foot extended if you like. We're extending our right arm up and I'm, I'm putting my, my left hand behind me on my fingertips to give me some uh, length to allow me to elongate here and then turn from the bottom of the torso and keeping your head, imagine a little puppeteer, a very, not a malevolent puppeteer, a good puppeteer is holding you upright. And I'm standing right and now I'm dropping my arm down and using that to further my twist around, which is always elongation. Axial elongation is the axial spine the axial skeleton are all the bones along your spine, um, your your neck bones, your your uh, everything that goes down uh, to your sacrum. So axial elongation, that concept allows you to think about the spine as something that you can really uh, manipulate beautifully um, to open up and rotate. And now we're going to turn to the other side and do uh, just put our fingertips into the ground, feel, um, feel ourselves lift up and rotate the other way, looking, looking the other way. And now we're going to come back. Good. Now we're going to go onto our belly and do some um, back bends this way. Uh, and we're just going to put our, our arms down uh, in a kind of sphinx position. Oh, so we're on our forearms and pressing into our forearms and pressing our pelvis into the ground, the tops of our feet into the ground and, um, and feeling the curve of our spine. Our neck should be comfortable and in line with our spine. And as we push in, um, we can feel a bit of the extension in our ribs, uh, um, the opening of our ribs, and we're just breathing here. We're just breathing here. And now we are going to um, put our hands down and, and make a pillow with our hands. Put our, put our face on one side and just rest here for a moment. You can turn your toes in to face each other here. It's a very relaxing pose. Now let's let's put our um, put our hands down beside us, palms facing up, and lift our shoulders up, and then our head up, and then our chest up, and we can extend our arms, our hands out behind us, and then we can roll down here, and we can lift our head up, our shoulder, extending our arms back, and then. 
low down. Lift our head up, our shoulders up, and then extend our arms back. And this time we'll lift our feet up. Pressing and extending, the energy is moving out our toes. It's moving out our fingertips and the top of our head. And we can rise up maybe a little bit further, and then we're going to come and roll down. Good. Now we're going to just take, bend one leg, my right leg, and I'm going to hold on to the ankle. And I'm just going to extend that, or um, push out with the ankle, and your shoulder will rise up, one shoulder. And I'm going to hold it there for a minute, breathing. And then I'm going to come down and press that heel into, into my buttock here. And then I'm going to extend that leg out, lift my left leg up, hold on to the ankle, and lift, press out through the ankle, and you'll feel your shoulder lift and a nice stretch on the left side. And now we're going to come down. You can press that, that foot into your buttock. That helps you extend your front thigh muscles. Okay. And then you can put it down. Now we're going to move into bowl. Not a big surprise here. So if you if you can do this fine, if you can't, don't worry about it. Um, so I'm just holding on to my both ankles, and I'm extending them out. This is a beautiful opening in the chest. I'm pressing the pelvis into the ground. I always use two mats because I have a very bony and sensitive body. So I can do that. And I'm just holding here. You can rock if you like. Um, once again, just moving your, your knees together and extending your ankles out. That's a beautiful opening of the chest and of the shoulders and of the front thighs. Okay. And now we're going to come down once again, holding on, I'm holding on to my feet and pressing into the, into the uh, buttocks here. And now I'm going to just extend it out. I'm going to put my hands like a pillow and put my opposite cheek. So I'm just resting my opposite cheek on the ground. And I'm, I'm just extending my legs out behind me with the front of my feet flat on the ground. And we're just going to rest here for a minute, breathing easily, feeling our body relaxing. Okay, now we're just going to push back up into a child's pose. Here we go. And we're extending our arms straight out in front of us in this child's pose. Our hips are the back on, on towards our heels. And uh, my knees are open here, so my body, my torso easily fits between it. And stretching in this way, is a really lovely posture. It's very relaxing. And I can walk my hands over to the right, stretching, another nice stretch, on the side stretch here. So you can feel your breath really moving into your left side body because it's opened out. All of our ribs are opening out there. And then we're moving back towards the other side and once again, I'm stretching my right side body and breathing deeply into it, inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling, and then back to the center. Good. And now we can sit up. Now I'm just going to uh, go onto my hands and knees, and we'll do a pigeon here just to do a little bit of a another stretch before we get up on our and do some standing postures. But I'm, I'm extending my, my right leg, my right knee forward, and then I'm just opening out my foot so that it's at a little bit of an angle. The full, full pose, you, you have your, your foot at 90 degrees with your um, 
uh, with your heel extended. But in this case, we have um, I have tighter tighter muscles than that, and so I've got my uh, my um, foot at an angle and my uh, it's it's pointed. So it depends on how you're doing your posture, your foot changes. Um, and I'm just really this is a lovely back bend here at this point. And I can extend my back leg back a little bit more and really hunker down into this posture. Um, if it's difficult for you, you can uh, roll up blankets and put it underneath your, your right hip. And that gives you support in this posture. Okay. And I'm just resting here. And inhaling and exhaling, opening my chest up and out. Okay, and now I'm going to fold forward and I'm going to come down on my forearms. Uh, and then I'm just going to stretch my arms out and rest in this pose. Um, you can stay up. It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely opening in your chest if you stay up. This, there are benefits to um, all the variations in, in the pigeon pose. And I'm just stretching my, the, you can feel the, the stretch in the, in the glutes here and in the, uh, in the hamstrings. And once again, if we hold the posture for a while, uh, it helps us um, relax into it. We can go a little bit deeper. And these are more isometric exercises where we're um, we're working differently with the muscles. It's a very um, very good way to uh, condition our body. And also, since all of the yoga asanas are really avenues towards meditation, I think holding these postures helps us move into a more meditative state. And then I'm going to walk my hands in. I'm going to once again stretch up into this lovely back bend, um, extending my back leg out, um, feeling the opening in my chest. And I'm just going to roll back on my right hip and bring my left leg around and, uh, and just rotate. So my left leg is in front of me at an angle, uh, and my the uh, right leg is extended back, then I can walk it back with my toes. Um, now, different sides provide different, um, different uh, concerns. This is a much more, more um, challenging uh, posture for me on this side. So I have to wiggle myself, and I might use a blanket in this case, because I'm uh, Makes it a little bit easier and it's still a very good posture. So I'm just putting a blanket underneath my left hip and it allows me to feel a bit more relaxed in the pose. And I'm um, pressing into my into the palms of my hands so that my chest is opening up. And then I'm extending down to my forearms and I'm opening out and stretching all the way down. Once again, both feet are pointed. If you get crampy, you can just come up. And you can settle back down again if you like. Now we're going to walk our hands back. And I'm just going to come up, bring that foot back, and extend back into our first downward dog of the class. And I'm just pressing into my heels. I'm lifting my heels up. 
I'm just uh, bending my knees. This helps extend my toes a little bit. Helps my crampy toes. Um, you can pedal your feet a bit here and up on your tiptoes, extending back. And feeling really the liberation of the downward dog. It is a kind of liberation because it's just such bliss to be able to open up into this posture and feel your body, body strength pressing into your hands. All of the, uh, all of the fingers and the, especially the, the pads of your palm. And you're pressing back in your thighs because you want your legs straight. Your tailbone's feeling heavy, but your hip bones are moving up. It's a rather odd thing, but that's really what is happening. Your tailbone is heavy and your, your, hip, your hip bones are kind of tilting up. Or your sit bones, I guess they are. Tailbone heavy, sit bones up. And now I'm going to bend my knees and I'm just going to walk towards the front of my mat and stand for the first time. First of all, I'm going to just hang suspended with my elbows. Feel the, feel how already our legs are quite um, exercised by our poses, by our sitting poses and our reclining poses. And now we're just going to roll up and stand and toss it up. And I find um, when I'm standing in Tadasana like this, after a lot of uh, asanas on the floor, I feel my body settling into my feet differently. And I feel the upper part of my body lifting up, the lower part of my body extending into the ground. Okay, we'll do a few sun salutations now. Okay, now we're really, we, we really should feel liberated at this point with our sun, sun salutations because we've done some preparation for it. So we're, Inhaling and looking up. And now we're exhaling and forward bend. Halfway up. Inhale. Exhale. Right leg back, knee to the ground. Inhale. Exhale. Frame that foot back into plank position and then lower down. And this time we'll do knees, chest, chin, and you see the wave of the spine as it comes up into a low cobra here. And then we're going to push back into downward dog. And we're inhaling and exhaling here. Inhaling and exhaling. And we're just going to lift our right leg up and bring it forward between our hands and then our left forward fold. We'll do a half extension, inhaling, and we'll exhale down. And then we'll open our arms up and rise up, look up, and exhale our arms down, standing once again into Dasana. All right, we're going to do the other side. Inhale, arms up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right leg back, knee down. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, frame the front foot and bring it back into plank. And then we're going to knees, chest, chin, feel the wave of the spine. And we're going to come up into an upward dog this time or a low cobra. And we're pressing our feet into the our, the front of our feet into the mat, and we're feeling the opening in our chest here. And we're lifting our belly towards the spine. We're imagining that we are enveloping all of our inner organs with love. <laughs> we're sending good vibrations there. Stay well. <laughs> and now we're going to press back into downward dog. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. We're going to take five breaths here. One, two, three, four, five. 
two, three, four, five. We're lifting our left leg up straight, bending the knee, bringing it forward, and then bringing our right leg forward into forward fold. We're just going to rest here for a moment. We can hold on to our ankles here, and we can feel our, our, um, our body lengthening as we stay in this posture. You can hold on to whatever part of your anatomy works. And um, the, the, the elbows, once again, can provide you with uh, help um, with your forward fold. Um, you want to be able to feel the energy running up the back of your leg from your feet to your hips. And you don't want to feel too much torque at the top of your, your hamstring, and where your tendons help it locate itself on the bone, um, as you don't want to overextend the tendons. But uh, if, you, if you imagine the energy moving up, that really helps you uh, with the full extension of the hamstrings here. And now we're going to inhale and come halfway up with a little back bend. And we're going to forward fold, exhaling out, inhaling up, big deal in inhalation, look up, arms up, and then exhale. All right. So let's um, step back with our uh, left leg and we're facing, our hips are facing the front. So we're stepping back with our left leg about three feet. Um, our, 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 both our legs are, are straight. And we're going to go, we're, I'm putting my, my fingers in my hip creases. And I'm just extending forward in a pyramid pose. And I'm extending forward with straight back as long as I can. And then I'm going to just um, allow my torso to fall over the front of my leg. And I'm on my fingertips here. Um, so our hips are facing forward. Um, we'll feel our, 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 each of our thighs rotating out. So the back thigh is rotating out and the front thigh is rotating out as we are, um, we're suspended over our leg here. And once again, we are pressing into our back heel, lifting our arches. We can lift our toes up, brighten this, this uh, pyramid pose. And we can, if we're able to, you can use a block here, or I've got a blanket, but you could use a block. You can put your hands on a block or a blanket. And right beside your front foot, your left foot, your left, the palm of your left foot is down, and you are rotating into a revolved triangle pose. This is quite an advanced posture, so it might not feel good to you. If it doesn't, you can go back into child's pose or do a downward dog. And I'm just lifting my arm up here. So once again, really working on straightening those legs, um, feeling the torso turning towards the back wall. And our, the energy of our arms is moving in different directions. One is pressing into the ground. One is stretching up towards the sky. And now this is the tricky part. We're going to windmill our arms around and try not to fall over. OK, here we go. Inhaling, Ugh, there we go. And we're putting our hands, our feet, uh, once again, facing the front. And we'll just rotate to the other side and do the pyramid pose on the other side. So our feet are about, about three feet apart, back toes are pointed in, front towards the front toes are pointed towards the front of the mat. And we are rotating our hips towards the uh, front of our mat and keeping the back leg straight. There's a tendency to want to bend the back leg, so we're keeping it straight. And now we're going to just tip over the front leg, back straight, and our head should be in line with our spine. And then we can fold over it and let our hands fall to the floor. And we're just going to rest here. Once again, we're feeling this front thigh moving back and around. So there's a kind of outer rotation there, external rotation. 
and we're pressing into the back heel and feeling the knee should be facing the, the toes. It's, sorry, should, the knee should be facing the same direction as the toes in, the, in both cases. And I'm just going to rest here. You may find that one side is a bit more challenging than the other, that's fine. Only go as far as you feel comfortable. You want to be able to challenge yourself enough to make uh, to make your your body feel it's enlarging itself and growing, changing in good ways. But you don't want to have too much pain, so uh, pull back if it's if it's painful. All right. And once again, I'm going to put uh, here. I've got a block here. Oops, I think I've got a block. And I'm going to put my hand on a block, uh, and I'm going to rotate around uh, the other way, facing the back of the room, arm extended up, arm extended down, and keeping the back heel down, lifting the arches up. It's a very demanding posture, this revolved triangle. And pushing back into the back heel, and I think that's about it. <laughs> We're going to windmill back. Oops. Back to the front of the room. Okay. So some of us have wonky hips. I, I walked five kilometers yesterday and somewhere midway, I did something to my hips. So my hip is a bit wonky. So you have to really, I'm wiggling my hips here just to make them feel well loved. <laughs> okay. We're going to do some extended uh, extended uh, folds here, extended leg folds. And when, once again, I'm, I'm putting my hands in the hip crease, my fingers in the hip crease and folding with my straight body forward um, and landing my hands on the ground. You know, I can extend my arms out and my and, and pressing into my feet, my both my feet are facing forward. I can lift my toes up once again and lift my arches up. That really brightens the, the pose. And I'm pressing into my feet. I'm, I'm pressing my thighs back uh, and I'm keeping my knees straight, my knees uh, straight. And I'm gonna walk my hands towards the right and I'm going to hold on to the ankle. You can hold on to whatever works for you. And I'm going to draw down towards the right leg. Once again, pressing my feet into the ground, uh, keeping my legs straight. And really feeling this lovely stretch. And I'm going to walk back to the other side and do the same thing on the other side. Hold on to my ankle and draw draw my torso starting with my the bottom of my torso and draw it towards my chest actually is open as I'm moving towards the left leg and I can really feel it in my hamstring so I'm going to come back and move my hands back between my my legs bend my elbows and press into the ground and I'm going to drop my head down. Now, this is a, there's a, in, in, in uh, yogic, um, the yogic body, there are chakras and the one, and the crown chakra at the tip top of the head is quite a useful chakra to feel that it is opening. So you can put a block there or you can put your head on the ground and with, you can just um, feel the, the weight of it. Now you don't have to put a lot of weight on your the crown of the head, top of your head at all, because your your legs are, are supporting you. You're pressing into your feet, and you're pressing into your hands. Uh, but you can feel that. Now this is this is you can imagine if I had a different body at a different moment in time, or the same body at a different moment in time, I would just press into my hands, press into my head. My head would be on the ground, and then. Poof, my legs would come up and I would be in a tripod headstand. Now we don't have to do that right now, but it's a lovely thing to imagine. 
and a possible future. And now I'm going to press into my hands. I'm going to extend my head and rotate my body up again. Wiggle my feet in. And then I'm going to stand into Dasana one more time. I'm just wiggling, swiggling, feeling the energy moving in my body. This is apparently very good for your adrenal glands. This shaking of the legs, shaking of the hands. One of my friends has a special machine that she stands on that wiggles and squiggles. And, uh, but I prefer to just do this <laughs> with my yoga without a machine, without a wiggle squiggly machine. Okay, good. Now, let's do some standing postures, which are so invigorating. So we're standing into Dasana, and you can, and in Iyengar, you jump out, uh, but we can just step out. Um, and this uh, warrior pose is usually a longer, longer than three feet uh, stance, and you turn your right foot out, your left foot in. The angle is what feels good to you, but you do have to have your back foot on a diagonal. And we're going to push, push our, our, uh, our knee forward so that it's over top of our, I should move back here, um, so that it's over top of our, our knee is over top of our ankle. Both hips, both thighs rotating out, externally rotated. And now we'll just lift our arms up. And we want to feel that our body is moving up, 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 the upper half of our body. And the lower part of our body is moving, our feet are moving down. This thigh is rotating out. We're not allowing this to move in. And our arms are really stretching out. And now we're going to uh, let our back arm um, move down the thigh, our right arm curve over into a lovely, um, lovely reversal of the warrior pose. And now we're going to come back and we're going to do that again. And we're just going to come back into warrior and we're going to do that again. All right, back into warrior and then we're going to extend our arm out into an extended side angle. We can rest our forearm on our thigh or we can drop it down to a block or the floor and extend our arm up. Now, it's better for me if I use a block here because I can open up my chest more to the, and get a lovely, more of an opening towards the, uh, the ceiling. Or you can come up onto the thigh and work this way. And now we're going to press up into a triangle pose. Uh, and we're just going to extend our arms out into a lovely triangle, dropping our hand to the, to the uh, shin and arm up. And once again, the drishti, we have a focal point in all of our poses. We're looking up towards our hand here, if that's comfortable. If your neck is sore, don't do this. <laughs> Just look out towards the front. All right. And you can see I'm slouching forward. So I want to really feel the extension of my torso on both sides and uh, feel my chest opening here. And now we're going to come up and turn our, our feet to the other side and we'll, we'll do the uh, warrior pose again, bending our front leg, extending our, our legs to what feels comfortable here. And you want to both feel your body moving up, and then you want to feel you can go down, down, down here on the lower part of your body and extend your arms out, straighten your back leg, press into the back uh, side of your back foot. And I'm extending, extending, extending. And now I am going to move back into crescent, this is crescent, I mean, whatever this is, I can't remember, reversal, whatever it is, and then back this way, sliding our hand out, and then extending up. 
sliding our arm down and then extending out. And we're going to just stretch out towards our uh, extended side angle pose and lift our arm up so you have a beautiful diagonal here. There we go. And then breathing as you're opening our chest up towards the sky. And we can once again look up towards our hand if we like. That could be our drishti. And then we're going to come back, straighten that leg, and slide our arm down into triangle pose. So you slide it down to where it feels comfortable. You want to feel a space between your hip and your lower ribs. So your body, your torso is elongating as you drop your hand down and your other hand moves up and you look up towards the hand. And you can, there shouldn't be too much weight on your lower hand. Um, and we're just breathing here. Pressing into the back, into the, into the back foot, into the outer edge of the back foot. And rotating, rotating, rotating towards the sun. And now we're going to come up and uh, rotate our, our feet back into, wiggle them back into Tadasana and stand once again. Okay, now we're going to uh, do an eagle pose here. I have difficulty with my balance, but I'm working on it. So I'm just going to try an experiment here, which is not really an experiment, but it's a very good posture for our bodies to develop strong outer glutes, which helps us in these balancing poses. So I'm standing on the block um, and I'm um, just lifting my, lifting this leg up and down and I'm just lifting it up and down. Um, so I'm using this outer hip, strengthening this outer hip and this really helps in our standing poses to do this. We could do this every, oh, every day. <laughs> my, my block just burst. Well, it was a bamboo block. I guess not good to stand on. Oh, well. Anyway, you get the drift. <laughs> just, anyway, okay. So um, you just lift up standing on a more supportive block than the one I have. And then um, you could do that on the other side, lifting your leg up. Um, and using the outer glutes, strengthening the outer glutes. All right, that was an exciting adventure. Now, I'm just going to, um, uh, I guess I'll just do chair pose here. So I'm doing chair pose, which is you're scooting your, your bottom back, your arms up, and you're just going to rest here for a minute. And then you're going to stand up, lift your left leg up, cross it over, and you can move it behind your leg and hook it, or you can just draw, you can just rest it on a block. Um, and your, uh, your arms are raising up, and you're going to be uh, taking your left arm and putting it under your right and moving and then clasping your palms. You can just hold on to your arms like this, that does similar kind of um, stretch and, uh, or you can once again, put the palms of your hands together and you want to move your, your arms out from your face and up. That gives it a little bit of an additional and you can sit yourself down here in this eagle pose. And I'm just breathing here. And I'm going a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to come and lift myself up, unhook my arms and my leg, and then stand. Okay, and I'll do it this way. All right. So I'm this time, this time I'm, I'll do it on the side this time. I'm going back into, into chair pose, 
extending my arms up. Um, my hips are moving back, legs are bending, and I'm just staying here for a minute. Then I'm lifting my right leg up, crossing it over, hooking it either hooking it around my leg or putting it on a block. And then I'm sitting back into the chair. And this time I'm taking my right arm and I'm putting it underneath my left and I'm lifting my uh, arms and my, uh, my hands away from my face and I'm lifting my arms up as I sink lower into this pose. And I'm breathing and I'm breathing. Now I'm just lifting everything up, opening out, and I can move my hands back, clasp them, and just stretch over the front of my body here. It's a lovely stretch. With straight legs. And I'm just letting my head hang suspended. Okay. And moving up again. All right. Ooh. I feel quite winded by that practice. I think that uh, at this point, what we'll do is we will just go down, uh, move down, and you can get down as gently as you like. I'm just crossing my legs over, across, and then I'm falling back into <laughs> onto my back, and then coming up and sitting. I'm just going to once again sit in Dandasana and feel what the effects of that, all of those shapes and movements have been as I just extend forward uh, with a straight back and feel the action of this pose. My, my, the tip of my head is moving up, energy coming up into my heels, and I'm just sitting here breathing. Okay, good. Now we're going to just bring our knees back and stand on our knees. I've got two, um, two blocks here. We're going to go, we're going to uh, see if we can go back into camel pose before we start our final, final pose of posture. Posture, so I've got my my blocks beside me on the highest, um, highest stone um, level. And I'm just standing on my knees, feeling my body moving up. Once again, I'm moving, the bottom part of my body is moving down. My pelvis is tilted forward. Um, and I'm just dropping, I'm just really doing a lovely back bend here, feeling the opening in my chest. And as I feel that, I can feel my hands drop back to the blocks and I can use them beside me to help me open up my chest. Now you shouldn't feel any strain at all in your back. My poor puppy dog had surgery yesterday. <laughs> she's really, she, she's acting as though I punished her. She's so forlorn. <laughs> anyway, all right. And then we're just going to, I'm going to move my blocks down a level and feel myself extending up. And I'm pressing my pelvis towards the front of the room. All right, and now I'm going to come up and I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to curl my toes under so that my heels are lifted up. And I'm going to stand up again and I'm going to see if I can touch my heels on each side, and I can. So I'm going to drop down and hold on to my heels. Oops. <laughs> Except my dog is driving me bananas. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't seem to be able to do that right now. So I'll just hold on one heel. Or maybe I'll just relax here for a minute. My poor puppy. <laughs> All right, I'm just opening up my chest, and if you can, you can hold on to your heels. And then I'm going to come up again, and I'm going to move into child's pose. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Okay, now I'm going to just move back onto my back body. And hopefully, I think really wanting my attention today. Okay, I'm actually just going to sit here. That's nice. Okay, so I'm going to lift my, I've got my knees bent, and I'm just going to let them flop over to the left side and then to the right side, to the left side, and then to the right side. Now this time, when we let them flop over, we're going to really, um, we're going to press our upper leg, we're going to press into our, into our hip, so that the front uh, is, is uh, opening out. We're feeling the opening of our front hip on the right side here. And then we're going to go back and I'm doing the same thing on the left. I'm really opening out the front of that hip, the upper leg, by pressing into it. These poses that we do on our back are, feel a lot easier than sometimes in the ones we do standing up because we've got our balance and other things to think about. But these, these poses on our back are really lovely. Um, they have, we have gravity and we have a lovely sense of relaxation in our spine that's uh, just uh, in neutral spine on the floor. Now I'm going to lift my hips up, push, push into my bent legs, bent to my feet, and lift my hips up and I'm going to move my hips to the right, drop my knees to the left, and I can here, I can just stay here and look towards the right hand. Both of my arms are extended. Or I can lift my upper leg up and put it underneath my lower leg, my lower thigh, and that helps with the twist. It deepens it. But if it's too much, don't bother. And I'm using my opposite arm that's extended out like a clock like a second hand moving backwards and forwards in time. And this is a lovely image to think about. I've been thinking a lot about change and how difficult it can be and how unsettling it can be, but also how profoundly opening it can be to uh, different possible futures. So, you know, the old cliche, you know, when one door closes, another opens, that is very true. There we go. And, and Remembering that sense of change really helps us manage um, the ups and downs of living, I think. Without an age and experience, we know that we are survivors and we'll go on. Here we go. Now I'm gonna lift my legs up again. I'm gonna center my, my pelvis and uh, then I'm going to lift my hips up, move them to the left, drop my knees to the right, and look to the left. And I'm just resting here for a moment. And I'm going to lift my left leg up, the top leg up, and hook it under, hook the foot underneath the, uh, the thigh. Give myself a little bit of an extra twist. You can put your hand on your on your upper thigh, your right hand on the upper thigh, and use your left hand once again, like the second hand. And you might find sticky bits in your shoulder. If you do, just lift your arm off of the ground as it moves around, and you'll find that allows you the mobility without pain. So you don't want to have too much pain here at all. Um, so once again, you can just lift your arm up over any sticky bits, and then move your arm back and forward around. I think this is one of the first poses that I learned, one of the first moving poses I learned in about 1979. And I've always loved it. It really is a lovely shoulder opener and a lovely twist. Okay, now we're coming back to the center again and we're bringing our feet into our body. If you like, you can extend your arms in, in inside your your legs hold on to the outer edge of your, of your feet and do a little bit of a happy baby 
um, pose, I always shake a little bit. I like the way it makes my back feel. And you can extend your, you can feel your sacrum settling into the ground here. So that sacrum is the flat part at the bottom of your, your spine. And um, I really like this pose at the end of a, of a an asana class. You can tip your chin down a little bit. Sometimes we tend to overextend our, or just to, you know, have our, our head tip up. So tip your chin down a bit. And now I'm going to just shape out and put my feet down on the ground. And you can extend your legs up the wall if you like, or you can, can you can extend them down. My puppy is really, <laughs> she's quite drugged out, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, extending my feet down. Oh, she's licking my toes. This is very relaxing. <laughs> All right, and I'm just sitting here in, or laying here in Shavasana. You might want to be curled up in a fetal position. You might be sitting up in a, in a, on your, uh, sitting up with your legs crossed or in lotus or half lotus or um, cow facing pose, whatever feels comfortable. And now I'm really feeling my body sink into the floor. I'm imagining the floor is actually made of marshmallow. And I am just stretched out in that space between your skin and the mat. It dissolves and you feel your body relaxing. You're inhaling and exhaling is deeper and you're opening yourself up to simply letting go, being here now. And I'm just going to let you breathe and leave you in quiet for a few moments in this deep relaxation. Your face is relaxed, your jaw is relaxed, your tongue has dropped into the lower part of your jaw, your teeth are separating, your forehead relaxed.
And now you can feel a little tingling in your fingertips and in your toes. You can feel the whisper of a breeze over your skin. You can feel the air around you wanting to lift you up as you stretch out. Feeling Santosha, contentment. Seeking contentment within yourself, treasure the way your life is when you understand your wholeness and your completeness, the universe belongs to you, said Lao Tzu, the Taoist. You can roll over or you can stay where you are. I'm just going to read a beautiful short parable that's about contentment and about change and about being open to change. Once upon a time, an old farmer owned a single horse that one day ran away. The villagers said to him, sorry for your news, this is such bad luck. Possibly, said the farmer. The next day, his one mare returned with three other wild horses. The villagers said to him, what wonderful news, you are so lucky. The farmer replied, maybe. His only son tried to break in the wild horses and was thrown off and broke his leg. The villagers said to him, what terrible news, very bad luck. The farmer said, maybe. The following week, the military arrived to enroll all the able men for war except for the son. The villagers said, I can't believe how lucky you are. Possibly, said the farmer. <laughs> so that is Santosha. <laughs> Roll with the punches. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning. It's been a very beautiful practice with you and I'm looking forward to the next time we meet. Much love.